Well, welcome back. I had a little trip. This interrupted the video, don't get me wrong, but I had a trip to the manufacturers, all throttle bodies and O2 sensors and then fuel injectors and this, that, and the other. You guys will see those videos very soon. I'm excited about them. Also, the lighting today is brought to you by Mother Nature because it's coming through the garage door at just the right angle and it feels fantastic because it's winter time. That you know, explains the jacket, right? Anywho, so where we left off, I think it was doing a throttle body mounting and a few other things. We had some wiring harness stuff to take care of. Now, I went ahead and routed that because it doesn't take a lot of imagination to figure out where it's going to go. Um, but we've mounted the ECU over here. I'm sure this will all show up in B-roll. Um, but we got the ECU mounted on the inner fender. We didn't get all the rubber thing, uh, isolators on there because of the shape of the fender, but it is secured very well. We got the ignition box over here. Got some dirt on top of it for me and the coil and the trans control module, which is up underneath the edge of the fender right here. Now I've already went up and down with the hood a few times to make sure I'm clearing all the wiring, but also a lot of the wiring I ran across the radiator support from the other system, tied it in using appropriate gauge wire and everything. We have, I gotta get some new battery terminals because we've added some extra rings here to the battery terminals. I'm a huge fan of using side and top post batteries, that combination. That way, if you have this kind of thing going on, you don't run out of space. I have to go get some longer uh, bolts for the battery, but not a massive deal. Also, another thing we have to look into is the coolant temp sensor mounting location. Now that's a larger, that's a larger threading than what our sensor is, so I have to go get a bushing from the local auto parts store to make it fit this particular intake. Um, super not a massive deal. I mean, it's part of hot rodding, right? I mean, sometimes you got to cut a thing, weld a thing, do a thing, get an adapter, what have you not. Um, but yeah, everything's mounted. Uh, currently, the big thing is the fuel system. Now, I made a fuel system video about, you know, the different layouts and all that. And the, the style we're using is uh, an old EFI tank that's been heavily modified, right, to have an inline pump that's going to come through the throttle body, go to the regulator, and back to the tank. Um, we'll get, I'll try to get some pictures cause it's, it's a short truck and it's not jacked up terribly high. So it's hard to get that size camera underneath this truck and give any kind of an image. It's going to be of quality. So we'll do the best we can light it, use an iPhone or what have you not, and take some good pictures of how we got it mounted on the frame rail and how, what we did with the return line. Cause I already got the bed loose on the truck. I actually come over last night and took the three bolts out that was holding the bed together. So we have to address that later. Um, but we're going to pull the bed. So we have infinite access to the top of the fuel tank, modify whatever we need to modify to make sure that return line is in there, good and appropriate. We don't want to just pick a random 3 8 hard line going back to the tank because it could be a rollover valve and that's a huge restriction. It could be something funny. It could go not even to the tank. So we want to make sure what we're hooking up to is quality is correct. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at right now. We laid some wiring harness down, ran a few things. Uh, I've been trying to keep the wires all the harnesses and everything nice and clean and tidy so nothing's funny. We even got, <clears throat> we have the air cleaner on, but we also got the throttle also hooked up. This is not, this is not the end result, but this is going to be good enough for like current testing. We have to find another means of connecting to our linkage. We didn't, we just didn't have the right pin with us. So we'll have to go, I'll probably have to cruise over and go buy one of those later. I think they're at 10 bucks for that. Not a massive deal. Uh, but yeah, this, uh, we are looking good. Uh, I did temporarily uh, power this up. I just kind of staked everything to the battery and, you know, went ahead and triggered the system, made sure my switch 12 volt was good, made sure I had power on my fuel pump wire when I first keyed it on. I do. I've got to run that one wire back to the fuel pump, which I got really weird and lucky. Where I decide to put the fuel pump at is exactly how long that wire is. So it saves me from having to extend the wire any, but, you know. Small, small miracles, I guess, right? And because, uh, you know, anytime you extend a wire, you're opening that wire up for possibility of corrosion for environmental reasons. So you're either going to use a, like a weather pack connector or some kind of environmentally sealed insulated butt connector or something along those lines to make sure that while your fuel pump wire or any of the wiring's underneath your vehicle, it's not just getting dirt and moisture and picking up road salt and all kinds of crazy things off the road, corroding that connector. And then one day you get in from the circle K, hit the key and it's just not doing nothing. So just food for thought on that. So we'll get, we'll get onto this install a little bit. I'll try to get you guys some good pictures, some decent B roll of where we're at. And the next video you'll see on this is 
probably going to be the handheld adjustment and tuning video. We got a special plan. We had to take a slightly different direction on this because there's a young man's birthday coming up. So this is interesting. So we're going to do a little bit of extra for him. But yeah, we're going to be getting into the handheld tuning. So we're going to, I'm going to do you a software update and the handheld tuning and get it to where it's street drivable just on the handheld. And then we'll tip into some of the uh, calibration we'll do in the, the new software. So we'll go through the fuel tables, the timing, and so on and so forth, and just, you know, just make the best quality we can so that at home you guys can play along. If you're doing one of these installs or something similar to it, you'll know that it's like this is the approach we had to take to it, and this is kind of all the little ins and outs. So uh, I want to do the best I can for you. So let's get to it. When you're laying these things out, uh, I know we're not quite done with this video yet, um, but I just wanted to walk you around the engine bay just, just once. So if you imagine starting at the throttle body right here, we got the PIC connector on the side over there, and it travels on back. It picks up the VR connector, the coolant temp sensor over here, and then continues on over. Now you see there's a little CAN cable right here. I haven't hooked that up yet. That's a whole different thing later. But you got a little VR back here doing its job. And then the wiring harness just continues on. I got a couple things folded back and zip tied. And we get over here where the coil connector is, which we're not using it because we have a high roller. Otherwise, we'd have to figure out where we're going to put the coil on this side of the motor. Didn't want to do that. We got the additional wires, some of them. They're tucked in and run down the fender over here to the, uh, the fan hookup. So the main harness continues on and hits the ECU down here. And you see that, that one that I didn't put in because, well, I didn't have one that tall. Um, but back up to this branch, it goes on, and here's the main power wire switch, 12 volt, and everything else. And the uh, the ground trigger wire for the high roller also goes with this package as well. So I kind of tucked it in underneath the fender, made sure it wasn't rubbing anything funny. It actually follows the uh, the hood uh, latch cable as well. So it goes behind where the upper radiator support mounting portion is and it goes around. Let me walk in front of the camera here real quick. So it comes under the radiator support and it's just, at this point, it's just power wires and one, one trigger wire, no big deal. So we, it comes up and it hits where the high roller is. The high roller, it has its own harness, which is all folded and tucked in back here so it's not floating around under the hood. We didn't need all that. We just needed a couple connections like power. This is for the high roller. And then we got the TCM power and then we got the, uh, the actual kill shot power. Nice ring terminals too. So they're all going to the battery, directly to the battery. So then we got the coil plugged in and we got some switch 12 volt stuff that's tucked in, hidden behind the harness here and one tack wire that actually runs into the vehicle uh, for the tachometer to, uh, it, has a, it has a dash mounted tachometer in there. Racing stuff, right? So that's just kind of, that's the once around the map here, you know, throttle body to fender, split off under the radiator support over here, hooks into everything else. <clears throat> so we got fuses and relays behind the heater box over here because there wasn't a lot of room to put them anywhere else but it does it rides really nice it's not really grinding on anything and then it comes over we're going to tidy up a little bit more of this and you see the trans harness actually goes down to the transmission so we're going to get that routed really good so it's not interfering with the dipstick back here not touching plug wires over here not grinding on it's anything cutting itself so I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into like kind of how I laid it out under the hood. It's, it's uh, depending on your build, depending on the vehicle, whether it's a swap or what have you not, sometimes it's really hard just to install something like this to figure out where you're putting the ECU, how you're routing the harness. Is it going to look ugly? Is it going to be up in everybody's business? You just want to have a nice clean under the hood. It's, it's actually, that's one of the hard parts. Hooking all the stuff ain't so bad. Figuring out where you're going to put the wiring is a whole headache and a half. So... I mean, even the fuel pressure regulator, it's hidden over there behind the distributor. So we don't really need to monitor it because eventually this thing is going to get a fuel pressure sensor in right here where this plug is, and it's going to go right here. So it's actually going to fix the geometry of this line that I have as well. So it's going to take a little bit of tension off of this bend and, and flow a little bit better. Like this one's nice because of the way it's routed, but this one, it is preloaded just a smidge. Not enough to damage anything, but for the long run, I'd rather have that sensor in there to correct the geometry of the fuel line. So hopefully that ain't too much information at once, but, you know, it's always good to walk through this stuff and talk about it a little bit. Well, let's get on to this build. I got more stuff to do.